Here are my unfinished thoughts on the Godzilla vs. Kong trailer. Well, apart from how it reminded me of King Kong vs. Godzilla, it also reminded me of Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla, both the 1974 version and 1993 version. Because the 1993 version was made by good humans with a good purpose, but also the 1974 version had an evil purpose as well. It also reminded me of Godzilla 2000, where it had like this van and this ragtag team tracking down Godzilla. It also reminded me of Godzilla vs. Destroyer because of Hong Kong being the battleground in the beginning of the film. Here, they chose Hong Kong. I guess the filmmakers really like Godzilla vs. Destroyer. This film, along with the early ones I mentioned in the trailer reaction video, they make a pretty good Frankenstein's monster. <laughs> if a film gets made, what will the follow-ups be? And here are some possible follow-ups. Perhaps remake of Frankenstein Conquers the World because Charles Dance's character as the eco-terrorist in Godzilla King of the Monsters might return since he created Mechagodzilla. He has like the power to create monsters of his own for his own purposes. Well, supposedly if he died in this movie and someone resurrects him with the DNA of various monsters and becomes a new monster with his DNA, that is one possibility. Or how about War of the Gargantuas with uh, Charles Dance monster genetically mutated and Kong in the Sanda role and the other one in the Gyra role and have Brad Pitt in it as well as a main scientist. After all, War of the Gargantuas was uh, one of Brad Pitt's first films he saw and inspired him to be an actor. Perhaps you can bring back Destroyer into the Monsterverse as well, along with other kaiju. Please refer to my trailer reaction videos of Godzilla King of the Monsters, where I make a top 10 countdown of Godzilla monsters that you might want to see come back. Also, supposedly the film did get made and uh, it didn't do well, and Toho wants the rights of Godzilla back. Hey, don't worry. Instead of making more Godzilla movies, why not make more Kong movies? I mean, there's a possibility of having a King Kong franchise. And one more thing. If this movie's a success, please don't go down the route of the Toho Champion films, like the ones from 1969 to 1975. While some are good, and some are not good, it's a double-edged sword. I know something about the trailer. The color scheme. Orange and teal? I mean, what's the deal with orange and teal? We don't see the world through orange and teal. I mean, a lot of movies these days, like Transformers and Twilight, always heavily rely on the colors orange and teal. Look at the classics like Wizard of Oz, Singing in the Rain, the Ten Commandments, or Monty Python and the Holy Grail. They used all the colors of the rainbow, not just orange and teal. I mean, are there any other movies today that don't use orange and teal? <laughs> Well, Pixar movies, the Despicable Me franchise, as well as those Minions pictures, the Lego movies, and some of the movies you see on the Sci-Fi channel. I mean, just look at the classics. Apart from these colorful examples I showed you, no pun intended. I mean, look at Batman by Tim Burton. The color that dominates the movie is black. Various tones of black. Batman Returns. Black and white dominate this movie. Batman Forever. While black takes up one portion of the film, green seems to dominate the whole movie. In the Peanuts special, it's Flash Beagle Charlie Brown. Pink seems to dominate the cartoon in some scenes. Let's talk about King Kong's comebacks or his appearances. While Kong Skull Island was causing a lot of hype, one month before that movie came out, Warner Brothers released the Lego Batman movie, which had an appearance by King Kong. 2018 was the 85th anniversary of King Kong. And if you think Ready Player One was the only movie where he made a cameo appearance, guess again. There's this film from Spain called Up Among the Stars, which was made in 2018. This movie was a tribute to classic cinema. And King Kong made an appearance, but it was done through stop-motion animation rather than CG. Now that is a strong tribute to the original classic. I mean, way before all these movies, King Kong made an appearance in this Italian art house film called Necropolis. According to author Donald C. Willis, in his book about horror, science fiction, and fantasy films, which got published in 1972, he said that in the film Necropolis, King Kong made an appearance there. Here he's seen monkeying around with a ball of yarn. I don't know if that's Kong or not. Maybe it is. Maybe it represent. Maybe it's a gorilla or an ape of some sort. Maybe that ape is representing of man's 
subconscious of some sort. His beastly side, his aggressive side, or his sexual side, it's hard to follow this film. Now, if you think Godzilla vs. Kong was the only movie where King Kong makes a comeback, guess again. He's going to make an appearance in the film Space Jam, A New Legacy. Now, I discovered it, and I even put it on Facebook about that discovery. He is seen briefly there, and this movie is like the amazing world of gumball on steroids. And now Kong is going to come back in a Skull Island anime, an anime based on the movie Kong Skull Island. Ah. <sighs> Why does it have to be an anime? Why, because the Americans don't want to waste their talents? Also, I'd like to point out the Easter eggs and references in the MonsterVerse movies. For Godzilla 2014, there's a reference to the original 1954 film where Ken Watanabe's character, Dr. Serizawa, is a reference to the scientists in the original movie. Also, there's reference to Mothra in one scene where the name of the school pet, Caterpillar or Moth, is named Mothra. There's also reference to Godzilla's Revenge, where the boy in the train looks like Ichiro from that movie. In Kong Skull Island, there's a lot of references and Easter eggs as well. There's like Senator Willis and Secretary O'Brien, which is reference to Willis O'Brien, the man who animated King Kong back in 1933. They're the Skull Crawlers, which looks like the ones from the original movie that was like trying to eat Jack Driscoll. The giant octopus is like a tribute to King Kong vs. Godzilla. And there are various allusions to the Dino De Laurentiis remake of 1976. You have to see it to understand it. It's one of these movies where the hardcore aficionados could understand it, but if you're new here, you just gotta watch it first before you get the references. In Godzilla King of the Monsters, the 2019 version, while there are no classic kaiju easter eggs, or some I didn't notice, you can see some other non-kaiju easter eggs as well. Rodan was called Big Bird, and King Ghidorah was called Larry, Moe, and Curly. <laughs> a Three Stooges reference. Most people say that the 1982 remake of The Thing, the 1986 remake of The Fly, and the 1988 remake of The Blob, they say that their remakes are better than the original. True. I respect their opinions on that, but hey, I beg to differ. I prefer that the originals are better than the remakes, but hey, that's just my opinion. And if people say, well, Matthew, do you know any other movie whose remake is better than the original? I'd say, yes, of course. One Million Years B.C. from 1966 with Raquel Welch and special effects by Ray Harryhausen. I mean, this movie's a remake of One Million B.C. because the remake has really good special effects and great music. The original, well, it's just clunky. Godzilla vs. Kong is a remake of King Kong vs. Godzilla. And to me, I bet you're agreeing with me on this one, this is an example of a film whose remake is better than the original. King Kong vs. Godzilla from 1962 is campy and silly. Godzilla vs. Kong is a film that we can take seriously. A remake gives a movie its own voice. If it is retold and executed in the same fashion, then it defeats a purpose. Remember when Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho got remade in 1998? It was a scene-by-scene -scene remake. Even the dialogue was exactly like the original. Imagine if Peter Jackson remade King Kong with his cast and his technology, but the dialogue and the scenes are all the same, exactly like the original. Then it kind of defeats a purpose. It doesn't give it its own voice. Much could be said about various intellectual property that got rebooted. A reboot? A remake? It gives it its own voice. As long as it's recognizable. Like the 2015 reboot of Danger Mouse, or the 2017 reboot of DuckTales. Well then, I hope I got that out of my system. So do you agree or disagree? Do you have any other thoughts? Please write down in the comments down below. This is Matthew Belmont saying, have a nice day, stay home, stay safe, and stay healthy. And don't forget to see Godzilla vs. Kong.